Down home roots blues, man. Oakland style. Bay Area style. From the streets, man. From the heart. Fantastic Negrito is delivering, you know, messages all through his music. He's staying true to the roots of blues. Crazy style, he has, he's always had style. People would say, you know, who's your favorite artist? I'd say, this dude the X. They'd be like, I, I've never heard of him. I've been working so hard, trying to get ahead, but they still won't let me live. We're in Oakland, California at Black Ball Universe, which is my creative space. It's my collective that I belong to, which is made up of artists, filmmakers, screenwriters, and musicians. And it allowed me to uh, give birth to Fantastic Negrito. In Oakland, Berkeley, San Francisco, the whole Bay Area, it's been amazing. I mean, all my shows are sold out. It's, it's overwhelming, man, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm the middle child, starved for attention, and so I ended up, you know, wearing, you know, flamboyant clothing and becoming a, an artist. First, my father would not let anyone listen to any popular music, and that was, like, forbidden. So I grew up as a little kid, like, listening to Louis Armstrong and uh, Indian music, classical, the Boston Pops. I thought the Boston Pops was cool as a kid. <laughs> Can you imagine that, you know? So I heard it. I heard like the classic good stuff. That's what he, uh, my dad exposed me to. Coming from the Berkshires, which is, uh, it's pretty homogenous, the Berkshires. And um, yeah, you come from that, then it's like you come into Chocolate City, baby. Oakland. You know, hip hop, punk music was all like colliding with each other and happening right in the streets. And I, I immediately became attracted to the streets and uh, I never came back home. That's what happened. I, I moved here at 12. Never came back home. I just, the streets, they came a calling and I, I, I loved it. At that time, you know, there was a crack epidemic, so I was involved in that and hustling and making money. And that's what all the kids were doing at that time. I remember we had to purchase some firearms from some dudes that were much harder than us. We were not hard at all. I don't pretend I was, I, I was a complete weirdo to these people, you know. These dudes were befriending us, you know what I mean? But they were savvy, edgy motherfuckers. So we come back, we look at the door, hey, why is the door broken? I don't know, let's go in. Apparently, you know, the door had been kicked in. So there was three dudes standing there in front of us and we had purchased these weapons from three dudes and they wanna know where the money is because of course they know we had lots of money. So they zero in on me immediately. They're like, this is the weak link right here. So I'm getting kicked and punched, man. And I'm trying to think, where could this money be? I keep, I want to tell them. And there was like a shed. And I remember the floor, I think it was a dirt floor. They put us down. And the one dude puts a nine millimeter to my head. And it's like, man, I was like, it's going to come. Oh, fuck. I was closing my eyes, pleading for my life, begging for my life. And, um... I heard the dude say, I found it. He found the bag of money, the gun. It came off my head. It felt like a thousand pounds coming off my head. I was wondering, what does it feel like? Changed my life, man. I think the next day, I got out of there, hitchhiked to LA. The next day, I went to LA with a hundred bucks and a keyboard. Today, oh, not as her today.